Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming, and good morning to those of you who are uh, joining us from across the water. I'm John Bowler, and I run BAPIA. Um, I really appreciate you attending today, and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this. Um, this is only the second in our webinar series, but we do have plans for, for many more to come. Uh, this particular webinar is with Mike Harris of Balloon Shop Pro, and he will demonstrate and explain uh, the benefits and how the Balloon Shop Pro management software works and what it can do for you and your business. Um, so with uh, no further ado, I will hand you over to Mike Harris. Take it away, Thanks. Mike. Thank you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever everybody's from. Um, my name is Mike Harris. I run a balloon and party retail shop in really North Wales in the UK. And uh, where did Balloon Shop Pro come from? been running a business for 10 years with my wife and we were looking for something that would work for the balloon and party industry and there just isn't anything out there because our industry is so complicated our bouquets can be made up of any balloon that we've got in stock we need to have customer diaries we need to log job sheets etc etc we couldn't find the perfect solution so we found a work a couple of things that were workarounds but they were sort of ten thousand pound eight thousand pound i was like if i'm spending that sort of money I don't want to, uh, to have to wait. I don't want to have to make um, allowances for it and uh, have workarounds. So we, uh, we got together with my brother. So it's a family business. He's a developer. He's been working in the IT industry since he left university and he's in his 40s now. Um, and we wrote Bloom Shop Pro. So it's designed by Bloom, Bloom Professionals for Bloom Professionals. Um, so I'm going to get straight on with the demonstration. Um, as John said, any questions, do put them in the chat box. He will stop me if he thinks it's relevant. Um, you should now be able to see on your screen the Bloom Shop Pro home screen. Can somebody just give me a yes if that's working because I don't want to start demoing. Brilliant. Yes. Thanks, Samuel. Okay, so this is the front screen. It runs on a Windows PC. Um, we do hardware as well as software. Um, it's a Windows PC-based system um, using touchscreen terminals. Today, I'm just running it on a laptop just so I can demonstrate it to you. The system is locked down. At the moment, you can't do anything with this system. You can't press any buttons because I haven't logged in. Each user has a barcoded security card, which we provide you with, and you just scan those and they switch the system on. So there you go, that's now logged me in. It's put my name up the top corner. I can now do a transaction. We have three types of transaction. We have an immediate transaction, which is a walk-in. So somebody comes into the shop and they want to buy just an individual balloon off you or a bouquet to take away there and then on the spot, we can do that straight away. We have a collection, so that's a customer collection whose customer is going to come in, order today, come in at another time, so maybe at the weekend or tomorrow or a few months down the line, even years down the line, it doesn't matter. We can take advanced bookings. And then we've got deliveries. Um, this allows us to deliver to venues, etc., and we can charge for delivery and keep a note of the delivery location. So I'm going to start with an immediate transaction. So a customer's just come in, and it is a very simple transaction. They've bought a, uh, a Qualtex 2 and 1 in pink. So I just literally scan the first balloon, it says. And then I scan the second balloon. And then they want two weights. Um, it's as easy as that. It's two balloons, two weights. We click sale. The customer's given us £20 in cash. The system comes back, tell, asks us if we've got £1.82 to the customer in change. It will also kick the till drawer at that point, obviously, if you've got a till drawer connected. And then what it would do is it would print a thermal receipt. Now, obviously, I haven't got a... Uh, a thermal printer connected to this, you wouldn't be able to see if I did. So just as an example, you should be able to see now um, a thermal receipt on the screen. So this is showing you your company logo, a barcode. Sorry, it hasn't scanned very well. The items that have sold, your VAT breakdown. And then at the bottom, you can put footer messages and your, uh, your company details and everything like that. If you've got any offers, you can type those in the bottom as well. Okay, did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to log in again there. Yes. 
Sorry, I'm working across two screens here, and I'm going back to the forward, guys. So, um, just uh, bear with me if, it's, uh, if there's any problems like that. Okay, um, we'll do a customer collection. So this is a, uh, a customer who's come in. They've uh, they've bought from us before. We could add the new customer, but I'm going to search for a customer. Now in here, we could search by full name, surname, um, customer ID, uh, contact number, or even postcode. Um, let's put in here. Yeah. Okay, so this has brought up um, some customers for me uh, by postcode, postcode in there. Now, we've also got a history button here. Now, this is something we were asked um, asked many a time. Um, customers come in to us and say, oh, can you do me the same as you did me last month or last year? And it's like, oh, I don't know what you had. I'm just going to click on these. This is just test data that I'm using, so these probably won't even have uh, history in. Let's see if I can find all the history. In. There we go. So that one, Deborah Kersley, it's showing me what she bought. Um, that was delivery and some sets. Um, but it also tells me how much she spends roughly. Funnily enough, she bought the same thing twice. Um, but it gives me an idea when I see that, how much this customer likes to spend. So I can see if that's like 80 pounds or anything. Um, I know this customer spending around 80 pounds. It gives me the information to be able to upsell to this customer and sell them in the price range that they're used to. Okay. Um, so that's the customer history. We're going to pick a customer, and that's brought the customer details into here. Now we're going to select the date for the, uh, for the delivery. And the first thing I'm going to show you is date blackouts. Now, one thing we found, and a lot of these traps are here because the mistakes that we made as a business. Um, if we've got a date that's full for deliveries or we're going to be out for some reason, we can't take a delivery, we can actually black dates out in the system. If I try and click for the nine, the system's now telling me that the selected date is no longer available. But there is a management override allowed. So... If the manager scans it, you can carry on with that date and you can take the booking. We'll just book it up for a set. You take your time for the customer to collect. And now we're going to go into a bouquet. And this is where Balloon Shop Pro is different from any EPOS system you, you'll have come across. Um, I'm going to use an example of a Cortex Bloom Bouquet birthday classic bouquet. And that bouquet is made up of two foils, three latex balloons, and a weight. With the system, um, it will log stock control, sorry, all your foils, all your weights. We wouldn't recommend stock control in latex, purely because as it pops, you've got to get another balloon and another balloon, and, and you're constantly doing stock updates. And with the foils, it makes more sense to have it from a stock control point of view. So this bouquet is going to be made up of a Cortex Happy Birthday, Pink Birthday Sparkle, and a 30th Qualtex Pink Birthday Sparkle, and a star weight. So how do we tell the system that's what we want without it being too complicated? First thing we do is customers come to us and said they want a birthday classic. So we can search for the bouquet name. It brings up all the birthday classics in the system. I click on that one. Select how many I want, and you want one. And it asks me to scan my first foil. It then asks me to scan my second foil. It will then ask me to scan my weight. And then I can put in, in here any notes I want, but I want to pink and very happy birthday latex. And that's my bouquet done. It's going to do all the stop movements for me and everything like that. Okay, so I click sale, and this time the customer's paid on cards. So they give me the exact amount, it's 16.99 on card, and it completes the transaction. Now I've got this previewing to the screen now, which should come up in a second. Okay, so this is an A4 receipt that this prints for the customer. Um, you, you print two copies of this, one for you and one for the customer. Um, it's got the customer's details in. It's also got the sales order number. Um, 
Um, it's got the due date, so when it's being collected and at what time. It's telling you on there it's collected from the shop. And it's also telling you it can be it's paid in full. Now, with the system, you can actually take part payments. So the, um, the customer can pay all in one go, or if it's for a wedding or something like that, or a christening or a party, it's maybe next year, you could take a deposit now, and then they can pay in bits as long as it's all, you've got an outstanding balance within your terms um, for whatever date you need. The system will work with VAT and non-VAT registered customers. So if you're not that registered, don't worry about that. Um, and again, you can put your own footers at the bottom, no refunds, Merry Christmas, etc., etc. This can also be emailed straight to the customer. So you could email the receipts to the customer as well. Um, just to show you an example of uh, an A4. Here you can see we've got a breakdown of different payments. So this customer came in on three different dates and paid separate amounts. We've also got loyalty points. I'll come on to the loyalty points scheme a bit later on. But that, uh, sorry about that. Um, that will come on to later on the loyalty scheme, but it works pretty much like a Tesco club card or that sort of thing. Okay, so that's our collection done. We've done a collection as easy as that. Now, at this point, the system hasn't taken any stock off because we could be putting an order for next year or next month. And we don't want it to affect what stock we've got on the shelf. So what we need to do is we need to tell the system that we want to take those balloons, put them aside and use them for um, use them for uh, the order when it's ready. So I'm going to log in again. And I'm going to search sales orders. And I know it was a sales order for tomorrow. So I pick tomorrow. Click search. There's my order. And you'll see the status is ordered. It allows me to display it back onto the screen so I can make changes to it. But now I'm going to make up the order. So this is telling me all the items I need. It's telling me how many I've got in stock and it tells me how many I need to pack. So I just click on the number and tell it I've packed one and it goes green. Packed one of those and it goes green. Pack one of those and it goes green. Now if for instance, I didn't have enough of these in, the 30 shining star. Um, I've got a section here called to buy. And what this allows me to do is tell the system I need to buy one or two or however many I want. And we'll see that later in the purchase orders. I'm just going to put it in there now. So if you remember the 30th shining star hot pink, I've said we need to buy one to fulfill an order. So that now has been all the stock movements. All the stock has, uh, has now been adjusted on the system. Does that make sense so far, folks? Brilliant, great stuff. If I do start rambling on, please do stop me because I can. I'm from Yorkshire. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to go on to a delivery just to show you the difference. We're going to log in as a different user. So you can see the background's coloured, so each user can have a different, uh, different colour. And different users have different user levels as well, so some can get into the admin screens that we'll come to in a bit. Some can't, depending on the admin level you set. Okay. So we'll do a delivery. Again, Easy to use it. it. I click on there now. Classic that we uh, that we put on just a minute ago. So that's going on there. Okay. So we've got uh, this customer now, and I'm going to do just a birthday mini, just again, um, simple bouquet, and all the the elements. Okay, so if we go on to birthday mini, we want one of them, and we'll use a happy birthday. Okay, and on there we'll put the latex. Okay, so that's our birthday mini, and obviously if he's going to be doing a lot more than that, I just want to show you just quickly. Um, and we click sale. And the system's going to tell us we haven't set a delivery zone. So that's telling us we haven't charged for delivery. So that's a trap in there to make sure that your staff, you or your staff, don't forget to charge customers for delivery. 
these zones can be set up how they want. We've got a customer in London that's got them on postcode zones. Um, we've got other customers that use zone one, zone two. I personally use zone one through to seven. I've got our shop on a map, the big target um, that shows all the different zones going out and each zone charges differently. Okay, click sale. I haven't de decided to give it a uh, delivery address. So we don't know where we're delivering it. So we're going to delivery addresses. We can select one or we could go in and if we go amend customer, we can actually add a delivery address. We can type it in there, the hotel town and add that. So we've got a different delivery address or we can pull down the home address as well. So I've now got three delivery addresses in there. And then we go and pick the delivery address. And it's as easy as that. We can do our sale. We can do it for £20 cash. And there we've now got this delivery and it's got the, uh, the hotel, the town where we're delivering to. Okay, so that's, that's how we do transactions. Um, anybody got any questions on that so far, just on the quick transactions? Right. Let's just... Let's go and look at the, the nitty gritty, the bones of the system now, because that's the stuff that you'll use on a day to day basis. And that's what, what everybody does on a day to day basis. But the real power of this system is in the admin section. So, in here, we've got a huge amount of stuff we can do. So, I'm going to start at the top and work my way around. Um, stock adjustments. If you've got a, uh, a, break, a breakage or you know, a faulty balloon, what have you. You need to get that out of the stock system somehow. So you literally go into here, you click outgoing, which is defaulted. Scan your balloon, tells you how many you've got in stock. I've got one there, and this one I've used on a shop display, so it's not faulty or anything like that. And we confirm, and that's just taken one off for us. Because if that had been a faulty balloon, we'd need to know it had been faulty so we can claim it back. Click on the blue, you can see the quantity reduced to one. And to reduce by one, I'm gonna put that's got a hole in the seam. And then we click the damage button. And again, it asks for a fault reason on here. So we'll put in here, hole by seam. And then I always put the batch number, if it's a Qualtex balloon, for instance, I always put the batch number in there as well. Um, this helps with uh, with Qualtex for any fault tracking when you send your returns in. So it's a useful little habit to get used to. And that confirms that adjustment. I know that that was a fault on the system. Okay, so if we go to breakages and supplier returns, and we pick a supplier, this is now telling us any faulty balloons between a period. Um, it tells us what invoice number we bought it on, what the part number is, the description, what the fault was, and how many. We would then click, I'm not going to do it now, but we would click, tag all those and click process. What that does, it then generates a report that it emails off um, straight to Pioneer with all your faults on it, and then they can either replace the balloons, do the credits, whichever, whichever you use, or to your supplier, it doesn't have to be Pioneer. Sorry, I just keep going back to that because that's, that's who we buy most of ours from. So you can keep a track. You know where the faults are. You can see there there's some with the uh, the batch number on there. And you can keep a track of your uh, your problems. In fact, let's just press, you can see the report. There we go. So there's the report. And that's what goes in um, with all the faults on it. Okay. Stock control is what it says. Now, with the system, there are two types of stock record. There are physical items, which are obviously your uh, your balloons on the shelf or your weights or what have you. And there's your bouquets as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search on here by description. I'm going to put in the birthday classic. We can see here our birthday classic. If I go in and amend, I just want to show you the back end and what the system is doing. So we've got a barcode that we give it and we generate our own for uh, for our own internal bouquets. Um, the name, there's no model number, 
you can categorize by category and by department. So you've got two ways of searching for your items for, an, for analysis purposes. Um, the sales price, if you've registered the VAT. This is the key area over here. This is the individual items. So this was when we were scanning it, oil one, oil two, and the weight. And that's just a text box that you literally put your information in there. So that's the uh, the categories record. The um, sorry, the key record. If I clear that filter down, and we'll scan, scan a barcode. Now we're going to look at a physical item. So this has got the barcode, the SKU off the product, the item description and the name, the model number, department, category, brand, selling price, your VAT, where you're buying it from, um, and the prices you pay. Because obviously with multiple suppliers, you'll be paying different prices. If you allow returns on the product, if the product is actually active in your system, so you're using it, if it's stock controlled, and if you allow multiples. Now, the reason we do the allow multiples is if you're doing personalized items, you wouldn't want to be able to scan in and say, right, I need personalized bloom and I want four of them. Because each one of those could potentially be different, could have different personalization on it. So that allows you just to scan one after another as individual items on your sales order. Um, I didn't, that then goes in your descriptions. Okay. Um, shortcuts favorites allows it to appear on your favorites button on the home screen and then this is our stock information so it tells us our minimum stock level we want of that product our safe stocks so are the level we'd like to keep in stock and our overstock so the system knows we've got too many okay so that's the stock control screens from here you can highlight over and it'll tell you what you've got in stock you can also double click that and that will take you into a stock adjustment screen as well um, stock take is what we use when we're putting the system together for you and we stock take your premises um, with you and that's how we get the data in. The catalogue update, with the system um, in the UK, we're working and pi partnered with uh, Pioneer Europe and they send us out their catalogues, obviously the seasonal catalogues, new bouquets if you're a Qualtex Bloom Boutique, um, and they get updated into the system. So when we receive those, we then do catalog updates. I can't show you a demonstration of that because I haven't got one on there um, due at the moment. But the um, the system allows us to go onto there. You put your selling price in for each individual item, your stock levels, and that will import them into the system for you. Okay, so let's do a purchase order. So this is how we get stock when we want to order. So I'm going to create a new purchase order. I'm going to select my supplier. And in the top there, anything in red tells me it's below stock, below stock or below my minimum order stock. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit import packing. Now you recall earlier, we told the system we needed to order a 30th Shining Star Hot Pink. And there it is, it's brought that in. So you can imagine if you were needing quite a few balloons, um, it would add those on for you there. You can then say, well, I want more than one. I have five of those to come in. You then click order low stock. What that's done, it's gone through the whole system and worked out what I need to order. It hasn't done my latex um, because they're not stock controlled. We do that visually. So what we would do is we do the order low stock. That's telling us everything we need to order. That's a barcoded item on the system. I would then go along and I would scan my um, jars. Each one of my jars with latex on has got a barcode on it. And I just scan those and put in a quantity of one. So... If, for instance, uh, let's see, uh, if I, imagine that was a jar, put one in, and that would add that onto the purchase order for me. Once that purchase order is finished, and I'm happy with it. We'll click Create Purchase Order. And this is saying, do I want to receive the order now? Obviously, this item, these items haven't come in yet. I'm placing the order in advance. But if I'd been to a wholesaler, I could actually go to the wholesaler, buy everything off the shelf, come in, Create a purchase order just by scanning them into the system. And then I can click receive and that would bring them into stock straight away for me. Okay, so this is my purchase order that I would then email or ring through to the supplier, telling them the model number and the quantity I need. Um, and then to say you can email that straight through. 
Um, French log number. You're going to be making note of that for your number. 6093. Now, obviously, I would print that off so that I'd have that barcode there ready to scan when the goods come in. Um, I'm not running on a printer here at the moment. Um, and that's telling us our status is open. You see on here, some are saying received. That means the full order has come in. And then you've got part received where there's back orders outstanding. Okay, so the goods arrive, our box arrives. We open the box and we create a new goods received. And we would scan our uh, purchase order. Obviously, I'm just going to type the number in that we've just done. There we go. And there's our purchase order arrived. <coughs> Excuse, me. Excuse me. Now, what we do then is we take the items out of the box. As we do them, we scan the items. It tells us how many it was expecting. Did three come in? Yes. Press enter. Scan those. Six come in? Yes. And so on. So you're checking each item off as it comes in. If you're happy that everything's come in, you can also click received all. And that creates a good receive. Those items are now in my stock database, so the system knows I've got those items in. Status has gone to received. And for returns, we need to provide the invoice number back to Pioneer or back to our supplier. So if we just click where the invoice number should go, we can type in the invoice number and the invoice date and click OK. And the system's got that for doing its returns um, when we need to do them. So that's how we get stock into the system. Our supplier amendment is just where we set our suppliers up. So you can edit your supplier, and it's just literally your supplier detail. OK. Does that all make sense on the stock side to everybody before I go on to the maintenance? Excellent. OK, I'm going to come back to business information at the end because there's quite a bit in there. I'll just quickly go through maintenance. Um, date blackouts. We were talking earlier when we did the uh, did the order. Um, we had the ninth was blocked out, so we couldn't take any more deliveries without a management override on there. This is literally where you had add your uh, date blackouts. So if you just click one, it just adds it to the thing. Or you can add full days. So if you're not on a Sunday, you can disable every Sunday in the calendar. Um, point of sale shortcut. This is your front, when you're on the front screen on Bloomshot Pro and the users are using it on day-to-day -day basis, you've got all the buttons on the screen, which are different categories. This just allows you to tick which categories you want to appear on that screen. Business details is what it says it is. It's your details and obviously your logo on there to put on the receipts. Okay, so the loyalty scheme. Loyalty scheme we've made as flexible as possible. What we've done is we've set it up in uh, what's called a penny a point system on, on our system. But you can set it up however you want. So every time a customer spends a pound with us, they get one point. When they want to use their points to buy balloons or party goods or whatever, one point is worth a penny. So you're giving, I'm giving about 1%. You can set that up that they only get points when, when they spend five pounds. You can give back five, pen, five pence for every point. It's entirely up to you. And it's really flexible, and we just set those up on there based on the amount of points that they've uh, that they've got. So you can see there, points earned, one point for every pound spent, and redeem the points for a penny. And that, as I say, works just like a Tesco club card does. User access is where we set all our users up and give them the access levels, so we can say whether they can get into this admin screen or not. Um, Categories and departments. Um, this is where you decide how you want your information reporting. So we can report by any category. So we've got banners, bouquets, bubbles, chloroprines, confettis, cups, and the list goes on and on. We then have departments. So on here we've got balloon decor, balloons, baubles. Excuse me one second. And you hate you when you think you're going to sneeze. Um, party wear, and then we've also got departments for the different seasons. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Um, yeah, so we've got different um, 
partners for different seasons so we can report on how we've done St. Patrick's Day, Mother's Day, Halloween, etc. Um, payment codes. Okay. With the system, we get the likes of a window cleaner will come and we need to pay him out of the till, or we may get a corporate customer pays a check. We want that to go through our banking till, even though we've invoiced that out of a separate accounting system. We have the facility to move money in and out of the till without it affecting the daily sales figures. So we know that, you know, we've paid the window cleaner four pounds or, or whatever. And this is just where we set the codes up. So we've got cleaning, corporate sales in, miscellaneous income, post going out stationary, etc. Um, I'll show you how you do how we do those when we get to the running cash. Uh, brand amendments is what it says. It's the brand. And then obviously we've got our system settings, which is where we set all the defaults up for the system for you. Okay, so our running cash totals. This is telling us what cash and what credit card transactions have gone through our till at the moment. At any point, we can add extra float. So if I wanted to add a float cash of an extra hundred pounds in there, we can do that. That's up to our cash in the drawer. And we can also do our day end lift in there. So if I wanted to, if I'd done the day's transactions, for instance, at the end of the day, and I zeroed off my card machine, um, I need to take that 16.99 physically out of the till as a card card uh, item to zero that for tomorrow. I do a lift, it's defaulted cash to zero, and it's taken all the card amount, and click accept. I could also have done banking. I've done banking today, I've taken 200 pound out, and accept, and that's reduced my cash in the drawer. So this is just telling us what's in the drawer. Um, other payments that I was talking about before. So let's just say the window cleaner's been, Put it to the windows, select window cleaner, four pounds, access. That prints off a little chip that I then attach to the um, the invoice. So when you've got the uh, the invoice that come, or the receipt from the window cleaner, stick that on there, put that in with your accounts, and you've got a record of that for your accountants. Okay, and then we come to day end. So it's the end of the day, we do our review, and it's like your Z reports you're used to getting out of a normal cash register or anything like that. Um, so it tells us our opening money in the draw, it tells us that we've had a float put in today, if we press that, it tells us who did the float. Uh, any other income, there hasn't been any. Our operating expenses, so that will tell us that we, uh, we paid the window cleaner. And any uh, any lift we've done so there's the cash we took out and the card we took out and again we can get a breakdown of that and then it tells us our cash sales our card sales and our total sales any VAT or tax our sales totals and then at the bottom it gives us our closing balance in the draw for cash and card then press preview that transfers all that information off onto a page gives us our breakdowns and then at the bottom, we've got a little counting sheet there as well. So you can print this off, and that is your day end report to go in your account. So you've got your sales in there for card and cash. And that total there at the bottom of your counting should balance your, uh, your closing balance on the system. So that's the day end report for the system. OK, um, I just, before we go on to the reports, I just want to go back to something on a transaction that I remember I haven't shown you. When you're logged in and you're selling an item, you can also apply a discount. So you see here, there's the discount button. You can click on that. It needs a manager override, so your staff can't give discount as they like. You put in your percentage, enter, and that's dropped the price of the balloon down. So I just wanted to quickly show you that um, on there. Da, 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 da. Get rid of that. And back into admin. Okay, so we're going to go into the report system. Now, the report system of Balloon Shop Pro is constantly growing because our users keep coming back to us and saying, can I have a report to do this? Can we have a report to do that? Can we have a report that will show me this data? Well, if the information's in there, we'll generate the report to do it if it's possible, and then we'll add that report into the system. So I'm not going to go through every report because there's too many of them, 
But we've got a sales report. So if I do that by date range, and we'll just do it for July, and I think on this test data, there's probably only today on there. Generate the report, and that's telling us the sales that we've done. So it gives us a sales order number, what the sale was, whether it was an immediate collection, delivery, how much it was, um, et cetera. And there's a fault on there for that. I just spotted that. OK. Um, the item report. This is, again, telling us what items we've sold in a period. And again, we can do it by item code range. We can do it by department. Or we can do it by category. I'm just going to do everything at the moment. So I generate the report. And that's telling me everything I've sold from each uh, each category going down and how much they were, how much we sold them for. OK, um, purchase report. This will allow me to do a report of everything I've bought by supplier or by brand. So say, for instance, I wanted to know what, um, let's have a look, what Qualitex products I bought from uh, Go International in a date range. That will go ahead and it'll tell me everything I've bought that I would have bought from Qualitex that I bought from Go International for some reason or other. And it just allows you to go back and analyze what data you've got. You've got your top 10 sales, your top 10 purchases. So top 10 purchases by quantity. It's going to be weights because I buy more weights than anything else. But by cost, actually cost, I'm spending more on uh, gold latex, for instance, in a period. The transaction report will give you for a particular date range. So again, we'll... We'll just do this month. We'll generate the report. And that tells us all our transactions in there. Stock adjustments. Again, I'm just picking a small date range here, but obviously you can do this over the whole data that you've got. Um, here we go. This is telling us everything that's outgoing, everything that's incoming. If there were a fault, it tells us what the fault was. If it was a goods received, it tells us the goods received, not it came in. And it tells us the staff name as well. So we can keep a track on what our staff are doing as well if it's not just us. Supplier purchase report. Let's let me see what I've bought from the suppliers. Back order report. Again, you can pick your supplier. So there we go. Click on there and do a back order. That will tell me what I've got outstanding that hasn't been fulfilled yet that I'm waiting to come in from, uh, from my supplier. And you can do that for any supplier. Uh, Probably my favorite report in the system is this report. Um, we've set the system up so that people can account one of two ways. The majority of people I know use the transaction way of, um, of reporting. So a sale, the end, end of the day sales is what cash is in the till, what they've actually sold that day. Some people, if they're Calculating by sales, they miss it's a hundred pound sale today, but the customer's only paid a twenty pound deposit, and they're paying that over however many months or whatever. I personally would class that as a twenty pound sale today. Some people class that as a hundred pound sale today. So we've allowed you to do either way on here. Uh, but if I do transactions by day, I'm going to do a big date range on it. What this what the system's done now is it's gone through. And it's given me time zones, time ranges from midnight till eight and then eight till nine going through and then six till midnight. And it tells me what the sales have been for that hour on that day all the way through for the date range that I've put. You can then, come on here, um, you can then view that as a, as a graph as well. Well, I'll come back to the reports in a second. Um, I'll just go through a few of the uh, the benefits of Loonshot Pro. So hopefully now you can see you can see on the screen um, benefits of Blue, Loonshot Pro slide. If that's working right for me, yes, brilliant. That's good. Okay, so we've got foolproof customer ordering. So uh, a customer comes in and anybody can actually uh, can actually take an order. It's really easy to use. Uh, we've got automated inventory, saving us time when we're checking to do our, uh, our, purchase, our purchase orders every week. We've got better security so we can monitor theft and wastage on our system. We can manage discounts and we can do promotions as well with the system. We can improve our staff efficiency and reduce errors on the system. 
will help us increase our profit margins because we can see by reporting what we're actually uh, using more of or less of. We can build a customer database with order history. Um, where are we up to? Uh, we've got an integrated customer load scheme in there, which you've also seen. And we've got real-time data analysis in there. It's got essential, excellent business information on there. So the, the information we can get out of the system allows us as business owners to see what we're doing with our system. Ooh, bit of feedback there, sorry. Um, but it allows us to see what our numbers are. And the most important thing with, with anything in business is knowing your numbers. So we know we've got items that are staying on the stock for ages. We can see that through the reporting. We can see what are our key dates and times for, uh, for when we're busy, when we're quiet, et cetera. Um, and yeah, the system, uh, the system just, just works. He says, as I'm trying to do this in the background while I'm talking to you as well. So I'll just go quickly back to the reports. Okay, so we'll go back into the reports and uh, we've done our sales by day or by hour. The other reports we've got on there are things like our current stock report, so we can see a full stock valuation of, uh, of what we've got on the system. We also have a faulty goods report. Now this report allows us to see what, what faulty goods we've had, so what we've returned, uh, how many we've bought, and also what percentage of faulty balloons we've got. So we can actually see if there's any patterns occurring. These are only test data numbers, obviously, so the absolute garbage, you know, I've only got two there. I've bought one with the faults, so obviously, it's 50% fail. But you can imagine when you've actually got real life data working in there, then uh, then that you can see the data and you can see whether there's any patterns occurring if there's certain balloons that I've got a problem with. Um, other reports that we've got in there, your loyalty scheme report, so you can see how much you're exposed in the points wise. So you can see if somebody came in, everybody came in tomorrow and wanted to use all the points, you can see what it was actually going to cost you. And you've got your average sales, so you can see where your, uh, your best sellers are. Okay, so that's the reporting system on Balloon Shop Pro. Has anybody got any questions on the system before I start going through all the different options for pricing, etc.? Okay, I'll go on to the nitty gritty bit then. Let's uh, bring this back up. So you should all be seeing the PowerPoint again now. Yep. Brilliant. Okay, so as we've said already, saving time using Balloon Shop Pro means you'll have more money, more money available to make, more time available to make more money. So the pricing starts from as little as £19 a week if you're only to take the software. There are quite a few options on here and uh, Obviously, I can speak to people individually to go through the best options for you, but I'm going to go through all the different options on here. Um, so option one is an outright purchase of all the hardware required, the software required, and the day's training. And that is £3,849, which when you compare it to the £10,000 and £8,000 systems I was looking at originally, you can see there's a big difference. And we've tried to price this at the, uh, the individual retailer market. Option two is to do an outright purchase of the hardware and the installation um, with your one day's training on there as well, which is 1849. And then what you can do is you can actually contract the software month by month of 48 months. So you pay £49 a month. We send down a license key to your system. If you don't pay your next month, the system stops working um, and you can pay it month by month like that. Option three is to work with one of our leasing partners. Um, we work with West One Leasing and uh, they will give you an exact price. But for all the hardware, the software, and the installation, you're looking at round about £103 plus VAT per month. Um, that's through a leasing company. That's not through us. Um, but we work in partnership with them. Um, or there's the monthly contract for the software only to run on your own PC or laptop or whatever you want to run it on. And that's £49 a month just for the software. Okay. Service and support, and Balloon Shop Pro, it's a computer program. They need constantly updating, they're constantly changing. Um, we're constantly bringing out new things. There will be bugs, even Windows has bugs, and when people report them, we fix them. We have a call center where you can dial in during working hours, Monday to Friday, with any problems. 
Um, we also have a support website that has video demonstrations of each individual part of the system. So if you've forgotten how to do something, you can go back there to it. And then, of course, um, in the UK, and we're starting to work with partners around the world now, um, we can do the catalogue updates. So we go on, we put all your latest products on there for you, all the bouquets on there for you. And we're at the end of the phone if you've got any uh, any problems. That's the key. Um, so all your uh, software updates are included. All the updates to the Qualtex catalogs is released. Updates to any Qualtex Bloom Boutique bouquets for QBB stores. The man support line we've already talked about and all the video guides. Um, and that is, I haven't put the price on there, that's £33.33 33 a month for the support. Okay, so let's talk about an offer that I'm going to put on for people today. Um, if you order and pay deposit before the 31st of July, we'll give you 15% discount on all those options I've just shown you. With the leasing, it's not 15% off the leasing price I showed you on the screen. It's we take 15% off what the leasing company pay us, which is the same as if you were buying it outright anyway. But you're getting a 15% discount on all those options. Okay, that is the webinar done. And look at that, I said about an hour. And uh, I think we've done okay. We've got a website, bloomshoppro.com. Uh, please go on there and have a look around. There's lots of uh, information on there. Um, you can pop your details in there and register on there. If you do that, we'll send out emails with a full video demonstration and also with pricing for you. So you've got all the pricing information. Um, we've got a Facebook group, uh, Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash Pro. Please go on there and like it for us. And uh, has anybody got any questions? I can see Lee's typing away. Okay, the hardware, sorry, yeah. Um, actually, the slide that's on the screen shows you some of it. It's a touchscreen uh, PC, which is shown on the screen here. Um, a Tildraw, a thermal printer, also an A4 laser printer, a desktop, desktop scanner. I think I've got everything there. Just to, let me double check the list. I think that's everything. I probably missed something. Obviously, your Windows installation, um, antivirus, cash draw, barcode scanner. Thermal printer. Oh, and a customer poll display as well, so the customer can actually see, you know, like you get in most shops where the customer can see the sale price, etc. As I say, we'll move on to the PC as well, Windows 8 and above. What we try to do is we try to make it as easy for you to use as possible. We wanted it to be easy so that uh, our Saturday girl can use it or so. Let's be honest, so I can use it. Um, it's got to be easy. It's easy to use. Um, the reporting is is key. The information that you've got in that system is so powerful. Um, there are some other add-ons we're working, with, working on at the moment. We're working on an add-on for the future for um, diaries. So I'm testing at the moment a Google Diary system. So when I put a sale on here, it actually appears in my Google Diary. So I've got all my deliveries and all my collections in my phone. So I know the workload when I get up in the morning, I can have a look at the diary and say, oh yeah, I've got this delivery, that delivery. So I've got all that there. Um, so that's something we're, we're working on. It's in a testing stage at the moment. That, that will come in the future as well. So if nobody else has got any questions, I think I'm, uh, I'm done, John. Great, thank you very much, Mike. That was, uh, that was excellent, thank you. And uh, just for, allow us to do this. I see Samuel's typing, but we'll see what, He's asking. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Um, we will. We have recorded this, and I will try and edit it and uh, get it onto the website as soon as possible. So if you've got, if people want to watch it again, uh, they can do. And obviously, if you've got any questions or you uh, any interest, please uh, get in touch with Mike. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for attending. Um, as I say, we will have more webinars uh, in the uh, coming weeks. Um, so please keep an eye out on that. And if you've got any suggestions for any webinars that you'd like to see, please let us know and we will put them in place for you. Thank you all very much and uh, hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.